I forgot to mention also that um, Andrew uh, was, as of a year ago, director of the Vancouver Queer Film Festival, um, um, through which I suppose she met our next presenter, uh, Vedic Shraya, uh, who is the kind of guy that makes me feel terrible about myself. Uh, when I when I hang out and watch like an entire season of Girls in an afternoon, uh, I get the feeling that this guy, uh, uh, let's see, a musician, uh, performer, uh, writer, uh, uh, documentarian now. Uh, so yeah, so while I'm uh, on my ass, this guy seems to be kicking ass. Uh, so he's here. No, it's, it's just a fact. There's nothing sad about that. Uh, so he's also a prairie boy that moved to Toronto as opposed to moving out west. I know there's a, there's a pull there. Um, so uh, Vivek was nominated a few years ago for the Lambda Award for uh, God Loves Hair. Uh, I'm sorry, I guess we didn't have any here to sell tonight. It's a beautiful looking book. I was really hoping to, to get to actually flip through it. Um, so, but he did bring a, a book tonight, What I Love About Being Queer. Uh, and I just want to point out before I forget to that um, all proceeds from this book are going to uh, George Brown College's uh, Positive Space. Um, are you still a coordinator of said space? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we, we ain't, as the bookshelf, taken a bite of that cake. So uh, everything, if you want to pick it up, uh, know that that's going to uh, Positive Space at George Brown College. Um, so he's here tonight, uh, and now I've spent the last few months with, uh, with the books that we've got here tonight, but the um, the stuff that I haven't spent any time with is uh, Vivek stuff. I've, I've looked at what I have been able to online uh, and at the trailer for this movie. So we're not going to see the whole thing tonight, um, but we're going to see a bit. So uh, I'll let Vivek come up here and introduce um, what I love about being queer. What if all I have to give are explorations of self-loathing? This was a text I sent to a friend as I sat at the Rio Theatre, waiting for my first short film, Seeking Single White Male, to screen at the Vancouver Queer Film Festival in 2011. The short juxtaposes some of the seemingly innocuous but fundamentally racist comments I heard when I was first coming out with Polaroids, illustrating my gradual transformation to a white aesthetic. That question I texted continued to weigh on me after the festival. I was reminded of an incredible play that I'd seen earlier that year. At the end of the play, one of the protagonists is killed for being queer. I should provide a spoiler alert, but the truth is that would be redundant. This could be any play. I can't count how many times I've watched a queer person die, usually as a result of violence on stage or on screen. Is it possible to measure the impact of this kind of representation? While I have a lot of respect for and have gained so much from the stories queers are bravely telling about how we've been shunned, disowned, fired, shamed, bullied, imprisoned, and beaten, I left that play wondering why these seem to be the majority of the stories that we are telling about ourselves and that are being told about us. I tried to imagine what that play would have looked like had he lived. Where are the stories that celebrate who we are the stories that show how queerness provides a richness of perspective and experience as opposed to simply being the basis upon which violence is inflicted. That was the kind of story I needed that night and on every night that I've closed my eyes and tried to imagine a future for myself and have seen nothing. I believe that the lack of these stories also leads to the kinds of heartbreaking conversations I have with queer youth in my work as the Positive Space Coordinator in the Diversity, Equity, Human Rights Services Office at George Brown College where I've been asked, is this just a phase? Will this go away? Is this a disease? How do you answer these questions? How do you answer the very questions that you asked yourself over a decade ago without making a promise you can't truly keep that things will get better in a couple of years? How do you answer with the same kind of immediacy that these questions are being posed? The answer was another question, a question rooted in the present moment. This was the beginnings of the What I Love About Being Queer project. In October 2011, I began filming in my tiny kitchen 34 participants' varied responses to the single question, what do you love about being queer, as a way to showcase the positive aspects of this complicated part of our identity. One of the recurring comments from the participants was, 
no one has ever asked me this question before, confirming for me the importance of answering it. As I stood behind the camera, I felt my heart swell with every new answer, either in sheer agreement, yes, I love that too, or just from the opportunity to consider a new perspective. The ample footage was edited and released in June 2012 as a short film. And now I'm just going to show you a short clip from the film. What do I love about being queer? What do I love about being queer? What I love about being queer. 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 What I love about being queer is more than anything, sort of like, apart from the obvious. Um, <laughs> I, there's a zillion reasons to like being queer, and they're all like mushing up in my head. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of one more. What I love about being queer. Well. Wow. I love a lot of things about being queer. I love the quill words. I love queer and questioning and quirky. I like being queer because it's a nice word. Say it, queer. It just feels nice in your mouth. I like stretching out queer. <laughs> that's a really loaded question, but I think that it's one that's really important to talk about. How awesome and amazing it can be to be queer because so many times we do only hear negative stories about coming out and about homophobia. Because of everything that I've been through, I value this part of my identity even more, in a way, because it's something that I've had to fight for and it hasn't just been given to me. What I love about being queer is that no one teaches you how to be queer. You have to actually take a moment and think about how you're going to love somebody and how that's going to work in a world that is straight. What I love about being queer is um, that there are no rules that are prescribed uh, to the way that I create my identity, uh, the way that I live out my sexuality, uh, the way that I live out my romantic life, the way I organize my relationships. Um, the way that I choose to, uh, to behave in the world, I think it gives me a, a Freedom. I can make up my own rules. I can be who I want to be when I want to be. I can choose my family. I can choose my friends. I can choose what's appropriately sexy for me. I can choose what sex means for me. It's about not just accepting things as they are. Um, not just saying that's the way it's always been. And that's the way it's going to continue to be. And that's something that I love to bring into my teaching practice. I love being a queer teacher because I get to encourage other people to see possibilities. It's like there's a box that everyone feels like they have to fit into. And I think when you're queer, you're already outside of that box, so it already doesn't even matter. I love the fact that my brother in the gay community can rock his, like, you know, I mean, his nail polish, you know, he can rock his, like, skirt, his purse, got his bag one day, and it doesn't even matter what people think because guess what? They already think he's different, and you're, you're right. I am different. I love it so much because it was that force that pushed me, that made me sort of strive for um, achieving anything that wasn't normal. You know, the world's not going in the greatest direction, so I, I like questioning that. I like going in a different way. This ability kind of ingrained in queer culture of questioning everything um, in a way that can be uh, disruptive or subversive or even sometimes divisive, but it's also really beautiful. I like thinking about who I am in the world. I like not taking for it for granted. I like other people not being able to take me for granted, even if it's a little uncomfortable sometimes. I lead an extremely examined life. Almost everyone who is really dear to me in my queer circles has had to really think about their lives and who they are and what they want. And so as a result, most of us are living the lives we want to live. I have a life that's really full of people, and those people aren't just limited by blood, family, or geography. What I love about being queer is the way that we um, form intimate bonds with each other in our community. 
and I don't mean just the way that um, we find intimacy with the people that we date, but also the way that we create friendships. I love how we love. Um, we do love differently, so I love, uh, I love how I am loved in community. It's really challenging what love can look like and how it can look like more than just the love that we get from our family or from a partner, it can be from a community of people. What I love about being queer is being part of the queer community because it's full of all of these really terrific, amazing, political, queer people. It's kind of like a secret society thing where you can be walking down the street and kind of recognize one of your own and it's probably one of the hottest things ever and you get like the queer nod. You know, when you're out and you see two girls holding hands, then you just get that little like, yeah, you know, like, I like you, you know? Or you see a guy in the grocery store or whatever that you're clocking as queer, and you know, you just want to suddenly be like, you know, we're on the same team. And it's uh, like, I just like to be floating around in the world and having these people that I don't know or, you know, have nothing to do with my life, but we have a connection. I, I've met people who I would never have met otherwise, and I've created relationships that I would never have otherwise. Whenever I'm traveling, I can go to another city, and there will be infrastructure there to kind of welcome me with open arms and say, hey, you're not alone here. Uh, there's a network of people who are looking out for you, and, and you can be safe, and you can be welcome, and you can be other things. <laughs> Some people think of of a queer identity or a queer se sexuality is only kind of having been around in the past decades or it's a very, very North American thing. And neither of those things are true. We go back centuries and thousands of years and even more than that. We're in every, everywhere in the world that there's people, there is queer people. This is... It became very, ear uh, became very clear early in the filming that there would be no way for this film to t fully represent the queer spectrum despite my best efforts to feature queers from different age groups, racial backgrounds, and with diverse gender presentations and politics. But there was also something exciting about the answers in the film not being exhaustive, that because our communities are so vast and complex, so are the ways in which we come to love. The What I Love About Being Queer Tumblr page was created in July 2012 to create spaces for the many voices I was unable to capture in the film so that any queer anywhere could also contribute and broaden the dialogue. This book um, is a compilation of beautiful, funny, and clever statements of what queers love about being queer, selected from the film or online and in-person submissions. There are answers from George Brown College students, staff, and faculty, and from people in Vancouver, Edmonton, Montreal, Ottawa, Chicago, Brazil, India, and beyond. The book also features brilliant essays by four of the film participants, George Brown College faculty and positive space team members, Lambda award-winning author Farzana Doctor, and acclaimed trans artist Alicia Lim. The hope is that the answers in this book will not only provide support and inspiration to queer youth who are struggling, but also help dismantle the idealization of tolerance that queers are subjected to. We're often tolerated and even pitied because we're born that way or because we have endured so much to say, this is what I love about being queer challenges that tolerance because it explicitly positions being queer as something that we celebrate, not just struggle with. This is not to say that struggling and celebration are mutually exclusive or that love only begins when the struggle ends. The struggle is implied in the question itself or rather implied by the need for the question to be asked. For many of us, the daily experience of being queer does involve a variety of challenges and this project is not about denying those realities or implying that only queers who aren't struggling can celebrate queerness. My friend Trish Yeo, also a film participant, has said about the project's central question, in a way, it's like any other kind of love. It's not perfect, it's not uncomplicated, and you have to work at it. This project is about celebrating our resilience, the ways we love this part of ourselves in spite of, and sometimes through the struggle. When I was 16 and trying to survive high school in Edmonton, I couldn't have imagined a sentence with the words love and queer side by side. I could barely imagine a sentence with the word love in, any, in relation to any aspect of myself. As a result, I've spent most of my adult life teaching myself the word love, what it means to hold it close against my brown skin, to wrap it around my queerness as counterintuitive as these acts sometimes feel. What I love about being queer is perhaps the most radical queer question I've asked myself and answered. Thank you so much.